Welcome back to another lesson. Um, we're going to leave ray casting alone for now, and we're going to go back to uh, skinning bones and stuff. So the last time we left, we did we set up our bones and our skinning uh, using matrix and the hierarchy and the whole spiel. Um, and you know we added weights to each bone to each vertice. So we get this animation. Now this animation that we have is the exact same animation that we had in uh, two lessons ago when we were doing bones and animations. But this one, even though it's the same, it's now using dual quatorians. Do It's a whole, instead of using, so it's a different thing instead of matri matrices. So we've been using quatorians for a, a long while now to handle our rotations. Now there's a thing that's called dual quatorians where it can handle... Um, uh, our translation and a rotation. Um, and I think in certain ways you can also handle scale if you want to. But for the most part, it's really just we can handle, uh, you know, those two transformations, you know, a translation and rotation. And this one is using dual quatorians. Um, now, why would you use dual quatorians over matrices? Um, uh, the first part is that it actually is less data. A matrix has about 16 floats. Dual uh, quintorians only have eight. So when you're dealing with um, just data, overall amount of data that you need to push to the GPU and push to your shaders, you're cutting your, your uh, use by half. So less data, tons of animations, it helps, it actually helps speed things up. Uh, Another reason for using dual quintorians over matrices just to handle the bone animations um, is the amount of operations. Uh, I totally can't remember off the top of my head because there's a chart I saw. But since you have a matrix X16 um, floats, and if you do dual quintorians, you're only dealing with eight. When it comes down to the amount of multiplication operations in addition, um, I, I don't think it's half, but I think it's about a uh, 30% less operation. So that means you'll be 30% faster because you're dealing with less, uh, operations. Um, you know, uh, to do dual quarantines, you kind of have to do cross applies. You have to do like, uh, two cross applies, but that's just more a multiplication and, a addition that happens in the, in the background. Um, and the last reason why you probably want to use dual quintorians over matrices is that you can then lerp the entire thing from uh, A to B. So uh, if you have uh, all your animations set up as dual quintorians, you can just lerp between, uh, you know, pose A to pose B, and you can increment it based on your frame rate. So since you can't do that with matrices, that's why you need to use quintorians. Um, so uh, the way we had it set up, we were using quintorians and then a vector to um, handle position. And we can alert between those two and then create a matrix that we can push to the GPU. But if we decide just to use um, dual quintorians, you know, once we use our quintorian and our position to kind of just convert into a dual quintorian, that dual quintorian itself can do lerping or slurp actually, you know, it's a more spherical, uh, you know, transition from A to B. So that allows us to do lur lurping. Let's just say it's lurping. That means we can do lurping on the, on the GPU side or on the CPU side, it doesn't matter because with that data structure or that way of data, we can actually do both. We can go either way. So that's helpful because with once we have a matrix, we can't lerp between matrix A and matrix B. It, it doesn't work that way. So, so yeah, we're going to do, do, deal with dual contorians. Uh, but I want to say a couple of cool things. Uh, uh, quick shout outs. Um, Steph Notch. Uh, he's uh, trying to update. Uh, he's adding to uh, GL matrix dual contorian capability. Um, his work worked beautifully. It actually did all the work I needed to. Um, it's only missing slurp, but uh, I'm sure he's, he'll be done at some point. Um, no, you know, he's still working on it, uh, but what he has now is great. It's not available at the official GL matrix, uh, 
GitHub, you have to go to his and, uh, you know, get um, his uh, fork. Uh, or you can go to GitHub and go to the project, and I actually converted his um, class because it's written as a module, and we kind of re took, took most of the functionality and um, just made it right as a class object um, that extends a float 32 arrays. Cause, so this way, it's very functional in the way I, how I handle um, the rest of the application. So pretty much all the mathematics is all thanks to him. He His uh, dual contorian functionality works. You know, the operations work really well. So if you are making your own implementation using GL matrix, you got to go to his and just pull out the dual to uh, JS file. Uh, probably another person I want a quick shout out to and I'll explain more is Robert Donny. There's a problem with documentation from um, this site that kind of supposed to show you how like I guess giving you like an example of how to uh, use dual contorians to do skinning. Um, but this example does not function properly for me. And uh, I found his example where he it's just some source code I found on, on GitHub. And I looked through it and just to see how he, he did bone animations. And even though he's using this exact same uh, math operations, he changed it oh so slightly and uh i just tried it and it fixes my problem so even though the official uh you know paper that describes how you do contorians and showing you examples like this example for me does not work um the way it's written um it might be a directs x example um because it's using float 33 um I don't know. So I'm not sure if this is a, this might be a, a direct X a shader code instead of a um, WebGL shader code. So that's probably maybe why the math doesn't work very f perfectly for me. So, but like I said, the math is all the same except for one change and I'll show it to you when we get to the shader. So I just want to say thanks to th those two because without it, I couldn't, wouldn't be able to make dual contorians work. Um, it's really hard to find a good example of how to make dual contorians work. Um, like I said, some of the documentation is all based on this one paper and this this one example. And um, yeah, and I, I tried to do the same thing. I just couldn't get it to work. But thanks to uh, Robert. Thank you, man. Um, your example from, I guess, 2012, I think, uh, did the job. So now that I pretty much explained what dual contorians is, and I, th I think one of the last thing I can probably say about dual contorians is that the way we use it is literally almost no different than using a matrix. It really is not. Because you got to think about it, a dual contorian is basically a two by four matrix. So we're now going to go back to the code. So we're going to do three small core changes. So in our contorian, we are going to add this new function, static function from the official GL matrix, the invert. Um, I could have done this for him, but maybe he has a better idea. But um, just the invert function. You know, we're not reusing it because I was I did a lot of different things using quintorians um, without dual quintorians. Um, it didn't work out well. So, But still, it's good to have there just in case we need it. But it's 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 not really needed for this lesson. But I added to the library, so if you see it in the future lessons, you know where it came from. And here it is. So moving on, um, got a new change, and this f goes to the shader builder. So we're going to the shader builder, and we're going into set uniforms, and we're going to be able to set a new type of uniform. It's a matrix two by four. Kind of like what I said, a dual, a dual contouring is basically just a smaller matrix. Um, we basically kind of use it like a matrix. So so when we pass it to the GPU, we're going to pass it in two different ways, depending if it's, we're do, dealing with um, bone re representation or we're doing skinning. If we're doing skinning, we're going to pass it in as a mat 2 by 4 2 by 4 matrix. Uh, two columns, four rows. And matrices are column 
major. So everything's calm first. Uh, and I think it's one more change. And uh, this is probably the VAO. Yep, in our VAO, VAO object, in our partition buffer, we're just adding the instance and uh, this line of code to turn on instancing. Um, because I'll show you in a bit. <laughs> so that's that. That's it. That's all we did need to do core. Very small changes this time around just to get the dual contorians working. So now we're back on our uh, bones page. I commented out a lot of things. We're not. So this is all the matrix stuff that I'm commenting out. So these are the shaders and the mat uh, materials for dealing with um, bones and skinning with matrices. So we're going to have new shaders. I'm just, I, I just mark with a Q, everything with a Q in the beginning, just to, to, to denote that this is the quintor dual Quantorian version of it. All right. Uh, so we're still building our 3D mesh all the, the dots, uh, all the vertices, all the points, the exact same way. And we can apply, uh, so so that doesn't change. That stays the same. And because of the way I've designed it, I'm actually able to go back and forth between um, the matrix version and um, uh, the matrix version and the dual contouring version. The only difference between the two is I need to change the material. Um, that's that's really the only big change is which material to use because it points to the dual Quantorian um, shader. But um, uh, Geometry Mesh can pull out um, the skeleton data from both of our um, different skeleton things. Um, so this is our old, this is the, the matrix one, just plain old skeleton. And then I made a new one called Q Skeleton. And the code is the same. It's the exact same code as the previous so like the two uh objects are built exactly the same the only difference is how um the internal data how it uses so the outside interface is the same so that's how um geometry mesh object can use both so you can kind of alternate back and forth if you have to um but like i said it f skeleton functions the same so nothing has changed and we have skeleton mesh which uses the q skeleton mesh and also uses it uh, a new shader, but you know these. So we have new uh, skeleton information and new skeleton mesh. Uh, we need both to uh, handle our new dual quartorians. Um, and like I said, everything else stays the same. Um, now, one thing I got we got to do is, like I said, if you're not if you're not doing your own implementation, you're just using fungi to do a lot of your uh, prototyping. Um, I haven't added this to the core yet, but this will be to, added to the core dual quad. And like I said, it's based off of um, Steph Notch's version of um, dual quantorians that he's going to add to uh, GL matrix when he's complete. Um, so like I said, I quickly show you the function. Um, as a constructor, uh, I use eight floats uh, to build it up. So it's a float 32 array. Um, T, what's T? Is that T? Oh, okay. Uh, and the constructor allows you to push in um, a quintorian or, and a uh, translation. So we, so you can put in a quintorian and a translation and um, so build the float and it instantly, um, you know, sets, sets up the data exactly how it's supposed to be. So, uh, like I said, this a lot of this functionality, some of this functionality is uh, my doing. Cause just I just want a certain, I want this to work in a certain way. Um, you have your copy, you have your add, uh, you have how you multiply, very right? big multiplication. Um, you have your scale. So, like I said, you can kind of handle scale as well. Um, so, like I said, you basically can probably use dual quintorians to kind of handle. Um, really just your three main translations. Uh, but you can't use dual quantorians for other things. Like, since it can only handle those two translations, like, uh, it, it has like basically like a uniform scale, a uniform, like here's, that's the thing. It's a uniform scale. So you can't scale uh, on an X, Y, or Z, uh, you know, uh, 
axis. So if you're going to scale, yeah, it's all uniformed. Uh, but if you need to, like, let's say if you're going to use like a cube, and like I said, I like I have one uh, one project I'm doing working. I set up a cube and I I built it as a one by one by one, and the idea is that I can scale it. So let's say if I want to make it wider and taller, I just scale it by x and y. So this way I can make the cube into a wall. You can't use dual quaternions for that because that is not a uniform scaling. Uniform scaling means you scale at all axes uh, with the exact number. So you can scale, but n not that way. So you, you can use dual quaternions to handle your transformations, but only if everything is kind of scaled uh, or scaled evenly. Uh, but if you're only going to deal with um, rotation and translation, then you can use dual quaternions over a matrix. Um, so you got your scale function. Um, you get your invert, um, square length, and square length only gets the square length of the actual quaternion. Oh, and I probably should mention dual quaternions. Even though it's like a matrix, the first part, the first half is really just your regular quaternion. Not, nothing really changes at all. The second part is your translation, and that gets converted based on your translation and the, the rotation. So a, a, a dual contouring is really just two contourings, but the first half is your actual rotation unchanged. So I should probably just didn't note that. Um, that's why it's doing um, square length only up to three instead of the entire object, because it's only getting the square length of the actual rotation angle um, this set function I put together um, this is dependent on what information you pass in so if you pass in a quintorian and uh, a vector um, I normalize the quintorian I think that's probably like one of the only things uh, if it's not undefined and not null so yeah if I pass in a quintorian I normalize it um, I think it needs to, quaternion needs to be normalized. Um, I think that's only the restriction when you're doing a dual quaternion. So it needs to be normalized. So um, so it's normalized. So I normalize it, and depending on what's available, I either build a dual quaternion based on these um, static functions. You got you know rotation and translation, just rotation or tr just translation, and then identity. And um, that's what an identity of a dual matrix looks like. You know, like I said, that's that's the rotation, that's translation. So that is, that's our set function. Then everything else comes from uh, Stefan's uh, library. Uh, these are the static functions to actually build your dual contourians. So... Yeah, like I said, if you're interested, uh, you know, this is, you know, um, this is the contouring you pass in, and it just goes into that first half. So it's unchanged. It's the translation that has a lot of some mathematics behind it. Um, so I just want to quickly go through it. You know, you have your rotation, uh, how to pull out the translation if you need it. Um, multiplication is very important. We need that. Uh, we have translate, so you can actually translate the whole um, thing if you want. AV. Okay. Uh, same thing, rotate X. So this way, if you have a, like, it's, you know how like sometimes you kind of have a matrix and then you can just apply, rotate, and it kind of just rotates all the information in there. You can do the exact same thing with contourings. So like I said, dual contourings, in essence, works very similarly to a matrix. Um, so yeah, just a lot of functions I just pulled in and I just changed them into static methods um, so I can reuse them, like I could say, in the, the manner that I want. Uh, so, so that's about it. So that's dual quat. Um, I know in his library he calls them dual two. Uh, quat two, but I just don't like that name because um, 
it makes me think like I always know he's named something two, three, four when I'm just testing. So to me, it, quad two makes me think of uh you know this is just the second quad version of file. So that's why I, for me it's dual quad for dual quatorians. So this I know that's what this is. This is a dual quatorian um functionality. All right. So now that we got dual quatorians working, let's see how the skeleton data works like. And uh, skeleton data. So when we're adding, so a lot of it's very, it's almost the same. Like the data, this top information hasn't changed. Now we change all our matrices to dual quantorians. That's one one change you'll notice. Um, and we still have our bind pose. And you, you, here you kind of notice uh, certain things. Uh, so, like originally, we had the the math equation, uh, the the matrix. That line really gets replaced by that. So, I gotta remind you, this skeleton is a copy of the matrix one, and I just end up pulling something out. So, so we're building our our um, local matrix or our local dual quantorian. You know, we just set it. We just pass in our, our rotation and our position. Same thing how we did it for our matrix. You know, we had we build our local matrix by passing in the rotation and position, and that's that. Um, then we check to see if it's apparent. If it's uh, if it uh, if it does have a parent, you know, here's our matrix. You know, we multiply the parent world matrix by our local matrix, and that makes our new world matrix. Same thing with quintorians. I just it's just different because I I built the library the file um, the class file differently. So it's world parent world. See p p parent world times local becomes our bones world. So it's the same thing. It's just parent world times local equals world. And if there is no parent, our uh, bone world, uh, you know, dual quintorian is equal to our local. And then to create our um, to bind pose, we invert our world it's exactly like our matrix. Like I said, this works exactly like a matrix. Once you have like a dual quintorian library, when you're using it in your code, it's different in your shaders. But when you're dealing it with in your code, you can basically just it's just a quick replace um, functionality. So you know bind. You just multiply the pose, uh, or you just invert the world matrix and make sure in your bind. And this one is just, it's just a different functionality. I can say invert and go straight into the bind. Because uh, that's a static function and this is a class method. That's the only difference. I, I like how this looks better because I don't like too many um, static sometimes. And our update is the same. It's the exact same functionality as up here, except I took out all the matrix stuff. Um, the only difference, like I said, in every all the matrix stuff was replaced by the dual uh, quatorian um, version of it. You know, this all is the same thing as up here. Now, the only difference is is when we are trying to find our offset, and our offset is the exact same thing. We multiply our world. By our bind pose, and that creates our offset. And like I have in comments, world times bind pose equals offset. That's it. That is the only real big change to update. You know, other than converting everything to dual, dual quantorians, is that that's how we get our offset. Just like how we do it with a matrix. And then um, we get our all the flat offset. You know, that's what it goes through all the data points. And just pull makes one giant array that we can then push to our GPU. And that's I'm just going to loop through the dual contorians and just make a huge array. And same thing with flat world space. So this one gets offset and then gets, this gets world space. And it's practically it's the same function that just makes one giant array. Um, so that's like I said, everything in the previous lessons we deal with uh, skeletons and matrices. The same thing. We're just swapping in dual contorians. They function. They functional. They function practically the exact same way. Um, 
our skeleton overall, it's also the same thing. Um, we've got our offset, and that's where we're getting our data. Now, the only difference here is where before, I remember we're passing in a, a, a matrix. Uh, for this one, we're going to pass in the dual contorians, but we're going to do dual contorians as um, two vectors. We're going to do, we're gonna do uh, two vector force. So we're going to push all our data to the buffer, right? And we have these new values filled in. Um, so I'm uh, trying to think. Offset. Nine, four. I'm trying to remember what this number means. I forget what that number means. I think it's how how many uh, floats am I, uh, is it? So I'm saying eight floats. Um, how big it is? I can't remember. But this part matters the most um it's i guess the total amount in bytes it's the stride uh we've done this before um creating partitions so the total amount of, of bytes the stride value for a, a um float array normally we put zero. Oh, that eight is the position oh it's the location my bad that's what that is eight is location four is how big it is it's four floats so but the data that we're passing in per chunk is actually 32 bytes. That uh, equivalents to eight floats. And we say we start at zero. So, so the next part is that we do partition buffer. And it uses the next uh, value up. So we're starting at eight, and over here we're starting at nine. So it's the next um, attribute. So that's attribute eight, there's attribute night. Nine, again, it's still four floats. It's still 32 bytes of information, but the offset is at 16. Th that's the second uh, set of the um, of quintorians. Like I said, quintorians are two uh, fact fours. They're matrix, basically a two of four. So in this instance, we're not passing in a matrix. We're passing in the data, but we're, we're partitioning it. So, and this partitioned, is instanced so i just wanted to do this because it's, it's it's quick uh, to, for me it's even though i'm passing in the data um the code is simpler if we instance uh, but when we're doing skinning i'm passing everything as a matrix so you, you actually get to see both so that's how it's done with instance so like i said it's 32 bytes 0 to 15 is the first quintorian 16 to 32 is the second quintorian <coughs> and then we just take offset divided by 8 because like i said there's eight floats per um uh, dual quintorian and that gives us how many uh, instances we need so that's some of the small changes uh offset is pretty much almost the same this hasn't changed much, except you know maybe just changing the buffer that we're accessing, but we're still passing in the same amount of data. This needs to be changed because it updates the hold every single time. I need to check to see if data has even updated. Like if the data hasn't changed, there's no point of pushing the buffer. So this is not optimized. Just in you know in case you're using this for um for anything, this is absolutely not optimized. I really need to add functionality to check to see if the data has changed. If the data has changed, it has not changed, um, then there's no reason to update it since it's first uh, update. So, um, and then we have our draw, and our draw has not changed at all. And that's our skeleton mesh. So, like I said, it's not too much has changed. Uh, And our matrix four. I probably didn't really mention this up here. Uh, and when we're doing skinning, this is the part that just uploads it by mat twenty four. It you really don't have to do anything. That one change we did to the core to accept mat two by four does all the work for us. So when we're dealing with uh, this shader, it's kind of automatic for us. And a lot of the changes I just showed you right now, dealing with it is 
is for um, the second shader because we're using um, two VEC4s instead of a two by four matrix. So now we're going down to the actual shaders. I'll first I'll show you the skeleton before skinning because the skeleton is easy because all we're doing, doing is treating our dual quartorians as a replacement for the matrix. Um, so that's right. This is actually garbage. This is me testing things and it broke. Um, this is the actual dual uh, quartorians. You have QR and QD. Position 8 and position 9. Remember, this is the first uh, buffer, and then that was the um, partition, because I'm splitting the data in half into two separate VEC4s. <coughs> Excuse me. It's early, and I'm talking too much. All right. So we can ignore 10 and 11, because these are errors. Or these are failed attempts at um doing things. So... I know, I keep forgetting I have to clean up the code sometimes. Um, so just for reference, you guys, that's that's that. So this, this is our dual quartorians um, being in, uh, instanced. So this is instance. So for every bone that we're rendering, we get one dual quartorian to handle all the vertices. Um, so in our main function, everything's the same. Now we're only do, doing this is function a uh, new function called dq transform. We pass in our two duct quintorians, and then we pass in our vector position. Gets our position, and we just pop it in into our regular matrix multiplication, and it gets the position of our bones, the the, the lines that represent our bones. You might be saying, why it's called qr and qd? Because dual quintorians there are two names, which I probably should have mentioned, but it makes more sense to explain now. The first half of the dual quintorian, like I said, it's just a rotation that's unchanged. It's called the real value. And the second part, which is the translation, is, is called the dual value. So that's the quintorian real, quintorian dual. So that's the D part is really the translation part. All right? So in case you see QR and QD, that's what it means. Q, Q real, uh, quotation, quintorian real, quintorian dual. Um, it's the position. It's the position of the you know the dual quintorian since it's a you know an array of eight floats. So here's the function. Uh, this is like the m most pain in the ass function to get working right. It took me a couple of days because, like I said, the example does not work correctly, and I don't know why. Because I don't know, because I think a lot of examples are meant for direct X, and I'm trying to make this work with GL. Um, here's a quick way to um, normalize it. I don't, but I tried normalizing and not normalizing, and it works just fine. So really, don't need to normalize because I think the data is already in good shape. Um, so I think we're good. But if you're not, if the data is not normalized coming from the CPU, then you need to normalize it on the GPU. Um, but like I said, I have no problems with it, but I'm leaving it here just in case I need it in the future. Um, just some comments explaining the 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 fix that fix this fixes it. Um, so this equation, so which is a nice, quick, simple equation, is better than the the equation I have in our quartonian function. I might actually have to convert this into JavaScript. Because I think this function is better than uh, the quintorian function that I have this, that rotates a VEC3, which I think it converts the quintorian to a matrix and then creates does the matrix multiplication. Um, so, like I said, this one looks like it might be a little easier. Um, but this part, does all it does is rotate a vector by the quintorian. That's it. That's a very simple equation. It's two cross applies. And this one kind of converts our dual quintorian back into our translation, the new position. And then it's basically the rotated position times our translation. And that equates to our new position that it replaces, you know, um, our uh, attribute position that's coming from all the vertices. And we just convert it to VEC4. And like I said, do the rest of the math. 
<coughs> and excuse me. Too much talking. The air's dry in my room. So um so that's it. That that those two lines of code is what all you need to convert. That replaces the the matrix multiplication. Because in the previous lesson, we had just an extra <coughs> a matrix that we multiply to this VEC4 that uses um, A position. But now we have a function that does it because, it, like I said, there's a couple... The matrix mul matrix math does not work on a dual quartorian. So we can't... So it can't be part of this. It has to be separate. So that's why this function... I had this function put together. Um, does the job. Now, see this part that has cross... 2.0 times then our quintorian position. This is how it works. But if you look in the original documentation of actually how it rotates, it's two times cross, not cross times or across two times our quintorian. This part is what's been screwed that screwed me up for a few days. When I went to his thing I was you know I looked around all I was looking for is dual quintorians and I looked here and I saw that he was doing a rotation I was like alright how does he do a rotation and when I come up here and there's the rotation it's the exact same equation except for that two is in the wrong place <coughs> so since what I have doesn't work I might try his version and it works. So that little small change compared to the original documentation is what makes it work. So like I said, I don't know if it's just the math is wrong here or this is because this is a direct X version and this is and this is actually a WebGL version. That little fix fixes the documentation that you would find online or the equations you find online. Because a lot of like I said, this is all I would find online. It's a copy of this. But he did it differently. And it does it, it fixes it does all the magic for us. So, thank you again for uh, Robert for that for, for me finding that little fix. So that's and that's how you be in this shader is what moves these lines. Remember, it's moving the bones, not the vertices. Now we're going to look at the last shader, which actually moves the vertices. Is the cube vertex skinning? Um, again, it follows the same stru uh, structure. Let me go. Let me go up here first. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. So here, so we have our, our mat four bones. We replace it by a mat two by four bones. Race, you know, and then uh, it follows the same new dual quintorians. I I just calculate the pose, but this I'm not pulling information out. I'm just pulling everything out straight from the attributes. There's no point. In doing it, um, so that's it. So uh, and like I said, follows the same rules. So here's our new function: dq bone transform. So and um, so our two by four is basically a multi-dimensional array. So if you were to let's say let's say if you wanted to access the first quintorian, um, m bone, you would say okay, this is the first quintorian. But then if you want to access its individual pieces, then it's basically x y z, or you know, like a multi-dimensional array normally it works. Um, <coughs> So that's really how we work it. So, so that's what Bones is doing. So with Bones, you know, we're doing it's pretty much the the weight. Like I said, the the, the skinning and boning works the exact same way. We're 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 taking our which bone that we're using, and we're multiplying it by our weight. And as long as all our weights kind of equal one, we're gonna get a really good. Um, uh, transformation and like I said we're mixing two bones together so it's like one dual quartorian and another dual quartorian so we're so when we say this we're going to grab um the first bone in our array so it's 
or not the first bone, like wherever bone it's assigned to, and then multiply it to it. So this way we're multiplying uh, each dual quintorian by a scalar, and then adding them together, and that creates our new um, bone. And then from there, we can then access the real and it's our dual, our rotation, our translation. So QR and QD. So you can actually see how it works. And then we follow the exact same equations for the bone animation. So that's really only the big difference between um, rep, uh, using dual contours to represent the bones and dual contours for representing the skin. So this is the skinning, the other ones are the bones. You don't need the bone one because that's only for debugging, so you can see what the bones are going. Uh, for the like for production, this is the only function you really need um, because that's this is the one that actually um, merges the bones together by its weight and then does the final calculation. And there you go, and that's it. That is dual contorians for bones and skinning. Um, this is probably going to be the, I want to say the best, but the most complete example of dual contourings you'll probably find online because trust me, this subject was very difficult to research. Um, I tried to read the documents, uh, the, the paper. Um, I just can't understand dual contourings, the mathematics behind it. I can't even understand regular contourings, along along dual uh, contourings. Definitely not a mathematician. Um, I can use the math, but I just don't understand how its core mathematics works. Um, so, yeah. So I can't really explain too far in depth about dual quintorians without understanding quintorians in general, but they function practically almost the same. And like I keep saying, they they function kind of like matrices. You you as you can see, if you if you go if you compare the two versions, and you can't and literally you can compare the two versions um, because I kept everything in this one file. This one file has both the matrix version and um, the dual contouring version. They're all in here. Um, so this so you can always compare the two. And like I said, this this one file is probably the best example you'll find online on a very simple bare bones example of bones and doing bone like just viewing bones and then applying that information to a skin mesh so this way you get both matrix and dual contorians um i think a lot of game engines kind of use dual contorians because like i said it's, it's squeezing every ounce of performance you're dealing with less data um yeah less data um it's quicker because there's less multiplication and addition operations done to do things. Because again, yeah, you have to realize uh, when we're doing this, um, just this part alone. So I'm taking this eight floats and I'm multiplying it by a, a weight. There's eight floats in here. If it was a matrix, it'd be 16 floats. So we'd be doing 16 operations, uh, multiplication operations, and then we have another bone, another. Uh, 16 operations which equaled out to 32 operations to just generate our matrix but since we're doing dual contorians this part alone is you know there's eight operations another eight at 16 we're cut we're cutting operations in half therefore we're doubling our processing speed because we, we have less data to handle and less data to multiply so like i said overall by using dual contorians you might for the most part, I, I don't I don't want to say fifty percent or double your speed, but you get close to double the speed of um, you know doing things. Um, so, so yeah, if you're dealing with skinning, especially you need to do this a lot when it comes to animating. So every ounce of performance you can pull out, the better. Um, so yeah, that's I think that's about it. Really, I really have to say about skinning. And bones with dual contorians. Um, I might split this file and then the Nekalex lesson into two parts: uh, the Q bones and then the M bones. And um, as I'm doing animations, I might try to do both, and just to, just to have just to have an example of both 
uh, and see if one breaks or one doesn't work. So, and I like to see if I can keep the class objects to work, uh, keep working, where you could kind of interchange. Like maybe if you don't can't use dual contorians for some reason, or maybe there is a problem with dual contorians that I didn't realize, or you know, or for whatever reason, or just for academic reasons to have a full example of um, animating with matrices and animating with dual contorians. So I'm gonna I'm. Th I'm going to think about just doing that, so keeping the both together uh, while we're going through this um, milestone of, um, you know, co uh, doing uh, mesh animations. Uh, so the next part uh, I'm going to try to do is how to load in um, models. Uh, I know we've done it before with object files, um, but I want to see if I can use, I think it's called GLTF. I'm not sure. Uh, of the the dig full name, I think that's called GLTF. It's a format <clears throat> uh, by the I forget which group it is. It's the group that makes OpenGL, I believe. That uh, and um, it's a it's, a, it's supposed to be a universal format that you can save all your three D models to, and it's supposed to be pretty efficient. Like uh, everything is saved as JSON, but the actual data can be saved as binary. So let's say you have all the vertices data as one, uh, you know, like that huge array of vertices that we have, you can save that as all one binary file. And then you kind of just load that in like a huge array of floats and just push it right into the GPU. So instead of, uh, you know, the idea is that instead of loading up a file and converting all that data into a buffer in information, uh, GLTF. I'm I'm probably using the wrong information. Uh, whatever it is, I really believe it's GLTF. I just wanna. I don't, should probably really spend any time on this video about it. Yes, I'm right. GLTF. So, uh, GLTF. I forgot what I was even talking about. So yeah, the whole idea of a, a binary. So this you can just load that whole thing as an array and push into the GPU instead of going through a file, parsing the data, like in, in the object file, we had to go through the text, parse it, arrange it, and then create our buffers from it. It's a lot of processing. So if you can just dump all the, the data in a, a format that's buffer friendly, that makes things so much easier. So you, you have less things to deal with. I'm not planning on writing my own object. Um, I think there's plenty out there. So I'm kind of hoping to find a good one that would work well with fungi, I like with the way I like to, how I like to handle things. Hopefully something just loads up really quickly and I'm able to take the data and push right into the buffer. That's what I'm kind of hoping to find. So I wanted to see if I can, um, except for the bone inf information, the bone information has to be translated into our Q skeleton and our skeleton function. But it should be very, fairly quickly easy to do. <coughs> I might make like a, an object that says um, load from um, you know, GLT, and they just, you know, I just pass in that uh, QLGTF data, and it just pulls the information into its own structure. So it knows how to handle the information for bones. So that's hopefully the next lesson is really just getting to know GTFL, GLTF, GLTF. Get to know that format a little bit. How to how to load it. Um, and what maybe what good library to use to load it? Because um, th that format can also load in animations. It can load everything: skeletons, uh, bones. Um, I think materials. The whole spiel. Everything can be loaded in from that format. So that's why it's one of a, one of those good formats to use uh, for uh, OpenGL or WebGL. Uh, it's probably useful also for um, DirectX. I just have enough experience. I have no experience with it yet which I'm going to have soon. I'm going to start converting fungi into a DirectX um, in then probably a couple of months. I think it's probably after I'm done with animating, I might take a small break and start building um, fungi DX so I can make a game engine that will probably work on Vive and uh, HoloLens and Hoshpiel because that will be fun to do. Um, so, yeah, that will be the next lesson. It might be... You know, no big deal. It's just really just loading data, um, and then then sh hopefully soon after that we'll start see if we can, uh, you know, switching poses between. So we're getting close to actually animating three D meshes. Like this is probably the hard part is just getting everything 
working with fungi, just understanding dual contouring matrices, how to how to skin, how to how to add weights and all this other stuff. Now we're just going to start getting information from like Blender and then just you know applying that information to our um, our uh, fr framework and just just animate it. So. Uh, so yeah, we're getting close to it. So I'm, I hope you're having fun. Um, I know dual contorians is a, it's a hard subject. It's kind of hard to research a little bit. Um, uh, hopefully this will be, like I said, probably one of the best bare boned examples of how to use dual contorians uh, for basically just basic, just for basic uh, rotation and translation, and for actual skinning with uh, bone weights and whatnot. So I hope you had fun. Hope you learned a lot. Hope you enjoy it. I'm sorry. It, there's really nothing new other than just new information because the animation is the same. Um, but, yeah, see you guys in the next lesson. Don't forget, like, subscribe, got questions, ask away. I've been helping people uh, with lots of questions recently. So that means you guys are watching. It means you guys are learning. So that's good. Um, so, yeah, see you.